Uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this particular video we are going to go over setting keyframes in DaVinci Resolve to do pans and zooms on existing video and time lapse in particular. I'm using DaVinci Resolve 17. I just upgraded to it. So far so good. Um, I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. Uh, render speeds are kind of the same. I'm still using the free version, so I'm not taking advantage of my GPU, but I do have 32 gigs of RAM in my computer, so uh, it's not too bad. A little laggy uh, on playback sometimes, but um, so far so good. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to import a... Uh, we're going to do a couple. We're going to do an existing video, and we're going to do a image sequence. So this is an image sequence of a time-lapse I shot. Uh, down at Robson Square in uh, Vancouver, so an ice skating rink, and uh, it was a slow shutter speed one. So there is some movement to the uh, skaters and uh, people just walking around. Um, if you'll notice, it is in the uh, 3 by 2 ratio because these are the images out of the camera, but we want to make it into a 16 by 9. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fill up the frame somehow, and we're going to do that by zooming in on the image a bit, uh, by setting keyframes. Um, I mean, if you wanted to just zoom in and just keep it as a static image, you could just basically hit the zoom uh, up in the top right uh, of the inspector tab there, just sort of fill in the frame. But what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, but we're also going to zoom out as the video plays. And we're going to do that by setting keyframes. Really, really simple in DaVinci Resolve. Um, first, we're going to do, though, um, is so sort of scrub through the video just to kind of see things. There was a bit of wobble in this video towards the sort of two-thirds portion of it which is weird because this whole complex that the skating rink is built on is basically solid concrete um, so my tripod was on concrete um, yeah it was very weird but anyway so we're going to stabilize it um, just kind of scrubbing through to kind of give you an idea of the slow shutter speed of this particular time lapse probably about a two second maybe half a second one second I can't remember um, but yeah, you'll notice that uh, right about there, right about there, there's a bit of a wobble. And what we're going to do is we're going to stabilize. Let's see if we can see it when we play it back. Uh, right about there. And right about there, too. So, yeah. So we're going to stabilize it uh, in DaVinci Resolve. And you can do that. Make sure you're in the inspector view of the video editing program. Um, yeah, right about there. And right about there. Yeah, it was weird. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to stabilize it. Um, go up in the inspector tab before we do any of the keyframing for zooms and stuff like that. Um, just click, double click on the stabilization. Uh, I always keep it in perspective mode. I just find that just the, it does the job for what I need it to do, but you can play around with the different settings. Make sure it's clicked on zoom because what it'll do when you stabilize it, it'll zoom in a little bit on the image. Um, and I try to keep it. Uh, down around 0.5 and the strength around 1. You can increase that if you want. If it's like really, really wobbly um, or really shaky, if you increase that, it'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, we're going to zoom in anyway by making this uh, from a 3x2 to a 16x9. So just go ahead and uh, click Stabilize. It'll do its thing. Um, don't know if you notice that, but it's slightly zoomed in, um, but probably enough to get rid of that little bit of wobble. And like I said, we're going to zoom in on this anyway, so I just want to kind of start off with as good an image as I possibly can. Um, and that looks much better. All right, that's cool. All right, so now we're going to go up, <coughs> and we're going to make this into a 16 by 9 or zoom in on the image to fill up the frame. Um, but what we want to do is we also want to decide, like, sort of where we want to finish. Um, we're going to start by zooming in on the rink and then we're going to zoom out. So do I want more of the buildings in the background to show or do I want more of the lights to show? And if you just sort of click and drag on the zoom, you can sort of change the position. And we haven't set any keyframes yet. So basically we're, what we're doing now is we're just kind of positioning where we want the video to, to end, right? What, what we want is sort of the final image as it uh, finishes zooming out. So, I kind of want to show more of the lights as opposed to the building in the background as a sort of final uh, frame. So, that looks pretty good. You sort of, And then what you want to do is you want to zoom to where you want it to kind of finish zooming out. I want to do this probably about three quarters of the way through the video just so that we have some, 
some video, some finished video at the end that is just this particular framing. So this is where we're, our, we're going to end our zoom. So when you want to go up and you want to hit the, the keyframes, and this is where the video is going to finish zooming. So hit those keyframes, and if you <clears throat> double click on that little symbol there, it'll show you where your keyframes are, sort of where you put it through the video. I don't really use this too much because I kind of know where my uh, keyframes are, uh, but you can play around with that if you want. Um, so yeah, so keyframes right there at the end of the video and script all the way back to the beginning of the video and this is going to be our starting point. So again, if you just click and drag, because you've already set a keyframe, it's going to automatically set a keyframe for you. But you can manually click on that as well. So I'm going to zoom all the way in. I'm going to change, probably bring this down a bit. And I want to center that ice rink. So I'm going to change the X and Y positioning. Move that over a little bit. Alright, that looks pretty good. So this is going to be our starting point. And if you'll notice, then the, the little red keyframes are checked. Um, that means keyframes indicate this is where the video is going to start. And as it goes through, those end keyframes that we did, that's where it's going to end. So set your keyframes in. And again, you can open up that little icon there and it will show you where your keyframes are. Um, so we've got our keyframes at the beginning, and as we scrub through it, we can see that it is zooming out. All right, that looks pretty good. And yeah, that looks all right. And as we get to, let's see if we can. I'm going to drag this in just for a little bit of fade in, fade out. There's cool little transitions you can do. Basically, just if you hover over the top left and right of the video. You can just drag those markers in to sort of give a little fade in, fade out. And we can play this back and as we go and it'll stop zooming in right where we set those keyframes, right about there, and then fade out. Alright, so there we go. Easy. Keyframes in, keyframes out. So there they are. And let me zap that out. So here we have 16 by 9 ratio, we've zoomed in, we've set keyframes at our start point, and we've set keyframes for our end point. And we've just used the sliders up at the top to set those keyframes, or to indicate where we want the uh, the in and out points. I'm going to put those back in there. Looks pretty cool. I'm going to output this <clears throat> as a finished video, give it a name. Uh, this particular one, because they were full-size images, I'm going to output as a 4K video. So let's get into 4K. I set where I want to save it to. I'm just going to do QuickTime, 24 frames per second. You can obviously you can change this to whatever settings you want or whichever output resolution you want. And we're going to add that, and we're just going to click Render. And like I said, with with Revol Resolve 17, I haven't noticed too many differences in terms of render time, but it's because it is RAM dependent. Um, I do have a decent amount of RAM, um, but uh, yeah, it's not terrible. I mean, this is probably what about a 10-15 second time lapse. A little more information for the program to work with because uh, you are doing your zoom out on it and you have sort of added a little bit more information to the file, so it will take a little bit of time. But we'll also compare this to using an existing 1080p video in terms of how quick it is. Um, and obviously with bigger images, uh, it's going to take a little bit more time, but not terrible. Still pretty impressed with it. Uh, I do like the, uh, the fact that you can see the titles before you actually drag them over, if you ever sort of add titling to your stuff. All right, that's cool. Go ahead and save your project. In case you ever want to come back to it, and we'll take a look at that video now. Yeah, there we go. Nicely done, some good movement. We're going to finish with the rink and the lights. Yeah, it looks good. And a fade out. Perfect. Good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on an existing video. This is a time lapse I shot a while back, sort of in the uh, waterfront area of Vancouver. BC Play Stadium with the city kind of off to its left. And what we're going to do here, we're going to set keyframes again in terms of our start point and our end point. But we're going to do a another zoom out, but we're going to sort of zoom out starting to the left of the video. 
uh, and then we're going to reveal the stadium as it comes in. So back at the beginning of your video, set your keyframes where you're going to start point is, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, change the positioning because we want to kind of start off to the side. But as you can see, there's the black bars there, so we're going to have to zoom in to fill the frame. And we're going to start with the uh, with the cityscape there. And again, by dragging these sliders, once you've set a keyframe, it will automatically add a keyframe. You can click it manually, or you can just click the sliders, and it will start that keyframe for you, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty easy. But again, you want a starting keyframe, because if you don't put your keyframes in there at the beginning, the video isn't going to know what to do at the end. right? Even if you add keyframes to the end, it's still not going to know what you want to do, even if you zoomed in on it. You still have to manually click those little keyframe icons to set those keyframes. Uh, this is going to be our end point. We're going to set our keyframes here. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to reset the video back to its uh, original position. So you just click the ones on the zoom. Oh, and we're going to click the zeros for the position. Sorry, not three. Zero on the X, zero on the Y and it will reset that image back to its original position. So that's going to be our keyframe out. Right? So as you can see, you go back to the beginning of the video, we've set our keyframes for that start point. If we play it, it will slowly zoom out and reveal the stadium, and it will finish on the keyframes that we set as our out position. Right about there. There we go. And a nice reveal of the waterfront there. The boat's moving. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it, but I think I want to change it. I want to maybe start with the stadium and reveal the city. So what we're going to do on that is we're going to reset our keyframes. We'll go all the way back to the beginning and just click on the little reset icons there. And now we just have a static video. So no keyframes are added to this video. We're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to set our keyframes. And we're going to zoom in, and we're going to change our positioning. Let's center that stadium. Make sure those dragon boats are down at the bottom there. Move over so we reveal all of the stadium. This is going to be our starting position. We've set our keyframes for our starting position. Center that. All right. Cool. And we're going to scrub through the video, and we're going to find where we want to end the zoom out. We're going to set our keyframes. And we're going to hit zeros, or ones, sorry, on the zoom X and Y. And zeros on the position. And that will go back to our original position for the video. So now, when we scrub through, we're on the stadium, and it will reveal the cityscape on the left of the video. And we'll end probably around the same point, about three, two thirds of the way through, and then we just have a nice cityscape. There you go. I like that one better. That one's cool. We're going to start on the, on the stadium and then finish with this whole city. It's kind of cool. Again, do our little fade ins, fade outs. Um, go back to the beginning, we'll preview that again. And this is an existing 1080p video, right? So you can use it on uh, existing video, you can use it on uh, image sequences. Whichever you want. Same principle applies. Keyframes in, keyframes out. You just kind of have to determine where you want to start and where you want to finish. All right, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and we're going to output that. Save your project first. And we're going to do this. This is a 1080p video. So we're just going to just give it a name. We'll call this one City Escape. Time loops. Save it in the same folder that I saved the other one. So yeah, we could call this one a zoom because we're going to come back to the same video and we're going to do a pan, a left to right pan on this. All right, let's do that. And again, this was a 1080p video, a quick time. Click on the old render. Now you'll see that because this was a smaller video or a smaller file size, um, it renders much, much quicker. So <clears throat> image sequences, full size images take longer. Existing video probably going to take a little bit, a little bit less time. So that looks cool. Go back to our edit page and we're going to use the same video. We're going to reset all of our keyframes. So there's no keyframes in this video anymore. Scrub through, make sure everything looks good. Let's get rid of those. Uh, let 
Let's see what are we going to do. Let's get rid of those in and out. Fade ins, fade outs. And we're going to do a pan. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit because we need a little bit more screen real estate. Set our keyframes first. Um, and we're going to zoom in because we need to work with the video a little bit more. Or a little bit more video real estate. I'm gonna change that position because I kind of like those boats in the front there. It kind of centers the stadium a little bit more so you have a little bit more symmetry. I'm gonna scroll, drag that over all the way to the... and you can just basically drag your uh, cursor over the position uh, to sort of move the, the uh, video. And that's going to be our start point because we've set our keyframes for that as the start point. And we're going to go right to the end of this because I want it to be a complete right to left uh, or left to right pan, I should say. And we're just going to position over the X and we're going to drag. And you notice how the little icon turned or the little keyframe changed to red? As soon as you do that, it'll change to red. But only if you set a starting keyframe at the beginning. If not, you can just click on it manually. All right. So I've set that as our out point keyframe and it's just going to pan from left to right which is pretty cool. So right from beginning to end. There you go. Cool. Play that back. And if you look at the inspector uh, window there, you can see that it's moving in the X position. And it'll go right to where we set it as our ending keyframe. And there you go. What I'm going to do looks pretty cool. Do a little fade in, fade out again. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, a little left to right, fade in, fade out. So this is long exposure, probably about two seconds per frame. Let's sort of see the helicopters and planes flying over, the boats on the water. Looks pretty cool. This is really cold this night. <laughs> really cold. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Let's save our project. And Go to the Deliver tab, and we will just output this. We're going to change this to Cityscape Time Lapse Pan. Save it in the same spot. Makes sense. 1080p. Add to the render queue, and let that do its thing. And then once it's done, we will then save our project, close our program. Well, you can close it or minimize it if you want, depending on the, if you're still working with it. Uh, and then we'll take a look at our videos. But yeah, super easy to do. So this is our zoom out. All right. Looks good. Reveals the city. Keeps the uh, stadium there in uh, sort of the main focal point. Which is kind of cool. And this will be our panning one, left to right. Reveals and again you can do the opposite. You can start at the uh, the uh, right and then kind of move to the left if you want. But again, you just have to set those keyframes at the beginning of the video. Always set them at the beginning, sort of where you want it to start, and uh, away you go. Yeah. So DaVinci Resolve 17, uh, Black Magic Design, great program. It's free. Um, there is a paid version, obviously, but the free one is pretty robust, pretty uh, pretty decent. Uh, they do have online training as well, which is great. Um, some really good in-depth training videos uh, in terms of how to use it. Of course, there's YouTube for <laughs> a ton of different things. And hey, if it's good enough for Godzilla, it's good enough for me. All right, uh, that is it for this week. I will see you again in about a week with another video. See you later. Thanks, guys.